Hello friends, happy Valentine's Day. I have purchased 25 books in the past like two months since I did my last book haul and I'm gonna tell you about them today. Actually, no, I just lied. I have 25 books here, but I purchased, I didn't purchase all of them. Some of them were sent to me. My bad. Let's um start there, shall we? I have The Eyes of the Best Part by Monica Kim, which I had... Oh my god, who's this publisher? <laughs> Air One? An imprint of Kensington Publishing Corp. I got sent to me uh, because I was making this video and I had to read a book that hadn't come out yet. So I requested it, they kindly sent it to me. It comes out in June. I'm really glad I liked it so I can now recommend it to people. Um, this is about a woman who is in a transitional period. Her parents have divorced. She's off to college. Um, she basically becomes obsessed with eyeballs and the idea of eating eyeballs in this story when her mother gets involved with a new man and um, he's very weird towards them. He seems to have a fetish for Asian women. He's making her and her sister uncomfortable um, and she just starts to like hallucinate about eating his eyes. It's a thriller. It's very um, gross, descriptive, murderous, and I had a great time with it. I gave it a four. These were both sent to me by Orbit. This one just came out. This one comes out in May. I'm so excited about The Honey Witch. Like I can't even take it. I just have this feeling it's going to be one of my favorite books of the year. So <laughs> I'm piping it up too high. Um, uh, An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson is connected to A Dowry of Blood, which I read the year before last year. I've heard mixed things about this one, but I'm still excited to um, check it out. It's got an academic rivalry. At the St. Perpetua's Women's College, we have this poetry professor who is like obsessed with one of his students. And then we have the two women, um, one of them, Carmilla and Laura, and they get tangled in a sister game of politics, bloodthirsty professors and magic. Then The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields is about this girl who lives on an island and she is being trained to become the next honey witch, whatever that means. And there's a curse on her that like nobody is ever allowed to fall in love with her. Her name's Marigold. And then um, this woman, Lottie, shows up on her doorstep and she's a skeptic and um, Marigold wants to prove the magic is real and they're obviously gonna fall in love and it's gonna be a cute light fantasy. Then what else should I go with? Uh, a couple books that I've read already that I just didn't own physical copies of. So I bought them. Uh, we have The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile, which I read last year. It was one of my favorite mystery books of the year. It's like a book inside a book where a person is writing a novel about this mystery where a woman dies in a library and there's like a group of people who overhear it and they have to solve it. And some of them are authors and they're writing their own stories. So it's almost a story within a story within a story. And it was really interesting. So I bought it. I also bought Terrace Story by Hilary Leichter. This is about this woman. You're following a series of kind of um, short stories, novellas, even though this in itself feels like a novella. And this woman can create space. And it's about like the people she encounters throughout her life. I also gave this a pretty high rating. I think a 4.5. So now I own it, which I'm happy about. At the thrift store, I found The Change by Kirsten Miller, which I read and was sent an ARC a couple years ago. So I still just have the ARC copy floating around. And I like this cover better, actually. So it's about this um, group of witchy women. And there is, is it like a series of murders or kidnappings or something? And we have this group of women who are in their like 30s or 40s and um, they use their different abilities together to catch like the culprit. They discover a teenage girl's abandoned body and the police aren't taking it seriously. So they're gonna like take their power and make change. Then, oh my gosh, this stack of books that I bought for videos. So we are what, like six weeks into the year and I've already done quite a few different videos where I had to purchase books and read them. So I have all of these now and all my reviews are already up. So we have Yearning by Bell Hooks, which is nonfiction. It's about feminism, the black American experience. Um, Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. You know what this is about. <laughs> Minor Detail by Adonia Shibley. This is about a Palestinian girl um, the murder of her by Israeli soldiers and the person who discovers that information. I've got What a Match by Mimi Grace, which is a beautiful cover. And it's this romance about a girl who, a woman who's a teacher and a guy who has a boxing gym. He has to sleep on her couch for reasons. And then they fall in love. She's like obsessed with finding her soulmate. So she's going on this series of dates and he's kind of always there when she gets back from them. 
Um, and it's just this very sweet romance. Another nonfiction, Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. This is about Trevor Noah's childhood experience. Um, just growing up in South Africa and his friendships and his family life and his school life. Very good. All of those. Yeah, all of those I rated pretty highly. Then we have They Were Here Before Us by Eric LaRocca, which is a series of short stories, a lot from like animal POVs. And uh, there's a lot of eyeballs and <laughs> graphic violence. Then we have Miss Laden Parts Have No by Sean and McGuire, which is the ninth book in the Wayward Children series about children who have experienced hard things and um, they go into these magical worlds where they truly belong and when they come back nobody believes them so they go stay in this home that Eleanor sorry I can't stop staring at this light on my body um they go to Eleanor West's home uh for wayward children where they all help each other and support each other and even try to get back to their doorway so there's some kids in here who are trying to do that and kind of use this one girl who is known for finding lost things like doorways and they end up in a bunch of different lands. Next I have Now Is Not The Time To Panic by Kevin Wilson. I liked this a lot. It's about this boy and girl in high school who create this piece of art and like poetry um, and then it's this kind of like surreal story where the world becomes obsessed with what they created and people are literally like dying because of it or like it's just this weird series sequence of events that happens because of what they created and it follows um mainly the girl whose name I definitely can't remember Frankie into adulthood as she's grappling with what she created and uh where her friendship is now with that boy. I might have actually already hauled this one Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I can't remember if I did here look at the cover again this is a Coven of Witches. It's so beautiful. I only gave it a three. I want to, I wanted to love this so much because it's so beautiful. Yeah, a Coven of Witches and their coven is being kind of threatened or some of them perceive it that way based on who wants to join and it's about who they're protecting and their friendship. Uh, interesting facts about Space by Emily Austin was a pre-order for me and I got to read it for a video which was fun. This is about a woman who has a lot of um, paranoia and um, is very obsessive about a lot of things and she's worried that people are following her that she's being stalked that she is going to die and while she's navigating all of that she's just like living life and we're following her and her relationship with her mother getting into a romantic relationship she's trying to figure out work-life balance and it's just existing quirky funny and intense said terry fallis which is a great way to describe it. I read and bought The Quiet Tenant by Clemence Michelon, which is one that I regret buying because I, well, it wasn't that expensive, but it's like, I paid full price for it, $25, and I did not like it. So now I just own it and I don't know what to do with it. Well, I know what I'm doing with it. I'm holding on to it until the end of the year where I do all of my wrap up stuff and then I will be donating it. But it follows the story of this woman who is being held captive by this man in town who everybody loves would never suspect him of doing anything unsavory um but he has we know from the beginning murdered other women is going to murder this woman unless she escapes i also bought trust of the emerald sea which is one i don't regret buying when i was purchasing it i was like oh my gosh this is so much money for a book that i'm just reading for a video that i did not have on my radar like obviously I'd heard of it but I wasn't planning on reading it necessarily because I didn't know that I liked pirate books but I think I do like pirate books so we have Tress who at the beginning of the book finds out that her childhood like crush love best friend whatever um hasn't isn't like where she thinks he is basically he's been taken away with his family he's supposed to have this marriage set up for him and she always thought like oh my god he's living this other life and like that sucks for me but he's away doing his thing and then um she finds out that's not where he is and in fact he is just like missing and his family doesn't care so she sits on this journey across many seas of spores which is very interesting and descriptive and fun to read and she hops between different like pirate ships and is trying to find this guy and save him from the clutches of the sorceress i know this isn't a review but i gave it a four and then my last stack here is things that i bought that i have yet to read but hopefully I will soon. We have The Leftover Woman by Jean Quoak, which I can't really remember what it's about, but I've read from this author before. So when I saw it at the thrift store, it was an easy, 
easy purchase. It's an evocative family drama and a riveting mystery about the ferocious pull of motherhood for two very different women. I don't know how to escape this light. One of the women is Jasmine and she arrives in New York City from a rural Chinese village, fleeing her controlling husband on a desperate search for the daughter who was taken from her at birth. And we're also following publishing executive Rebecca, trying to balance the demands of being a working wife and mother. I'm assuming she has like adopted um, Jasmine's daughter and now their stories in their world are converging. I also bought The Dove in the Belly, which is a very heavy book. I bought this because I pulled it out of my member's TBR jar and I'm gonna read it this month. Oh yeah, I have to read this this month. This one I remember takes place at university and it's following um, two men who are there and just like their connection. The electric, dangerous, sometimes tender, but always powerful attraction between two very different boys. I remember reading that to you in my winter TBR. I also pre-ordered The Night of the Storm by Nishida Parekh. This is a thriller I was really anticipating. Um, it has been getting really terrible reviews. Everybody that I've seen has given it a one or two or a DNF'd it. And on one hand, that does intrigue me, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, to read it myself and see what I think, but does make it more clear that it's not gonna be a literally dead book club pick, which I was considering it for. It's about this woman, I think we're following a bunch of people, but there is this main character, um, Jaya, who's a single mother. And I remember she has to like go stay in this big house with the rest of her family because there's this hurricane and the family like doesn't spend a lot of time together. So there's a lot of tension when they all arrive. The storm escalates, tensions rise quickly and soon someone's dead. Was it a horrible accident or is there a murderer in their midst? I'm assuming there's a murderer in their midst. So I don't know when I'm gonna read that. Hopefully it's not gonna sit on my TBR shelf for years. I'm just thinking about that stack of thrillers that I haven't touched. Also thrifted, I found A Woman Is No Man by Itaf Rum. I recently read Evil Eye. I gave it a three, but I wanna go back and read the thing that everybody loves from this author. Um, this is set in Palestine, 1990 and Brooklyn in 2008. So we've got a multiple timeline situation. In Palestine, we're following 17 year old Isra. She's married off and moves to Brooklyn. She has a very oppressive mother-in-law and her new husband Adam is pressuring her to have children. Then in Brooklyn in 2008, her daughter, I'm assuming is who we're following, must meet with potential husbands, but all she wants to do is go to college. And it's just their family dynamic and about um, women uh, making decisions. Culture and honor, secrets and betrayal, love and violence. It's an intimate glimpse into a controlling and closed cultural world and a universal tale about family and the way silence and shame can destroy those we have sworn to protect. Then I have two pre-orders about fairies. This is Emily Wilde's A Map of the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett, the second book in the Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies mm -hmm. series. I think this is a trilogy. I can't wait to see what the third cover looks like. I should probably design it and predict it in a video if I get around to it before it gets revealed. Um, do I know what's happening in this one? I feel like I do, but I feel like I have forgotten. Uh, she's creating a map, obviously, and she has her uh, companion, reluctant companion, Wendell. They land in trouble because assassins have been sent by his mother to invade Cambridge. Now they're on another adventure in the Austrian Alps. I will be reading this for my members uh, readathon in March, right when it's switching over into spring for me. I will be reading this. I think it's gonna be the perfect vibe. And then the last thing is Feybound by Sara Al Riffi. This has been getting great reviews and I'm so excited to read it. I think probably like, I'm gonna save this for my birthday. I think I'm gonna do like a birthday vlog where I just read for a week everything that I want to read. And it's gonna be a lot of fairy stuff. Two elven sisters become imprisoned in the intoxicating world of the Fae where danger and love lie in wait. The blurbs make it sound so good. I love the cover. I'm just so excited to read this. I am in my romantic fantasy era. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm loving all of it, but I'm reading it. So that makes it real. Anyway, that's my short and sweet haul for the month. I'll probably do another one in like six to 10 weeks. If I remember, I used to do hauls that were like, 60 books <laughs> like every single month and I just feel like my maybe it's just because I own all of the things that I want to own by now like there's not a lot of backlist stuff that I 
feel inclined to purchase the way that I used to when I would go to thrift stores and I would just buy everything I'd ever heard of. I feel like my book hauls have gotten a lot more reasonable, especially like that number is cut in half and I only do it every like other month. Anyway, I'm blabbering now and you don't really care. But if you stay until the end, um, give me all of the heart emojis that you can find. <laughs> and I'll see you later. Bye.